Thanks for joining us for the second night of our KVU News Defenders Austin American Statesman special presentation, Reforming the Force. We're diving into the controversy surrounding public safety reform in Austin and how it affects our neighborhoods. Last night, we looked into the role Austin is playing in redefining public safety nationwide and why activists have a bigger voice than ever. And tonight, crime against the backdrop of reform. Police are dealing with more murders and gun violence, but they're struggling to find the manpower to deal with it. Breaking news, a hostage standoff ended with a suspect shot and killed by police. Tonight, we're learning more about a shootout in Northeast Austin that injured a suspect and a police officer. The police investigating two separate overnight shootings. Four people were shot here at the Midland Plaza. In the past year, news of murders and gun violence have dominated Austin headlines. One of the fastest growing cities in America, dealing with big city crime. To help stop it, police have put new programs in place, including one announced in April to track down some of the city's most violent offenders and illegal guns. The facts, by August, Austin had 49 homicides. That's more than in all of 2020 when the city recorded 48 in one of its deadliest years in decades. Aggravated assaults rose 15% from January to June 2021 compared to the same period last year. And gun violence has been on the rise in the past five years, according to an APD report in March. It shows guns used in crimes such as murder, rape, robbery, and aggravated assault rose from 689 in 2015 to 1,546 last year. Gun crimes themselves, such as possession of a firearm by a felon, more than doubled from 503 in 2015 to 1,110 in 2020. Reports of stolen guns went from 864 to 1,016. Uh, and I think that has to be a, a concern for, for all of us. Uh, and I think we have to do everything we can to understand what the causes of that might be and to, and to, to address that. Austin's rise in murders and other violence also comes at a time when other violent crime like sexual assault and kidnapping is holding steady. Property crimes also staying relatively flat. The city is part of a national trend for a rise in murders and shootings, even among those that have taken no steps to alter police budgets or staff sizes. As Austin looks to reform police, the violence has taken center stage in the debate with questions about whether more police could help end bloodshed on the street. Austin's crime and policing policies became an issue in a June mass shooting that killed a New York tourist on 6th Street. The family of Doug Cantor said they blame Austin's policing policies in his death, but that what happened should not be used to push for more gun control. The fact that that's what it seems like politicians are doing with this story is deeply disturbing to me and my family. Um, this is the last thing we want. Concerns about crime have helped push a citywide vote in November. The group Save Austin Now is pushing a measure to make sure APD has at least 2.0 police officers for every 1,000 residents. The city has about 1.8 per thousand now. Pro-police community leaders point out that the city council's own consultant said in reports in 2015 and 2016 that Austin should hire at least 100 more officers to maintain safety and community policing goals. But others, including Austin police reformer Scott Henson, accuse officers and others of overstating crime. They're pretending that Austin is some hellhole, unsafe city. Turning it into a political scare tactic to maintain a traditional model of policing. Chaz Moore, director of the reform group Austin Justice Coalition, says some cities across the country have added or maintained the size of their police forces, only to see no real impact on crime. <laughs> like to me, after you call 911, the, the harm and the damage has already been done. Just because you have the officers doesn't mean that crime is reduced and it doesn't mean officers are still going to get there. Criminal justice experts say there is evidence to support arguments that more officers don't necessarily lead to less crime. Others say what often matters is not how many officers a city has, but what those officers are actually doing. 
Meanwhile, the causes of violence remain elusive. There's a lot of theories about what's going on. John K. Roman is a senior fellow in economics, justice, and society at the University of Chicago's National Opinion Research Center. What he calls a violence epidemic started around the same time as the COVID-19 pandemic. He attributes the spike to the pandemic itself. You have people with long-term trauma, long-term disputes. They're young men. They're not working. They're not in school. Their support institutions, their community centers, their churches, their you know places to go, people they, they talk to for help and services and support are closed. And so you're left at home with all the anxiety that we all feel. But Roman says Austin needs a multi-pronged approach to preventing crime, including addressing other underlying issues like economic disparities. We need to understand that concentrated poverty in the same places and perpetuity and the hopelessness that that creates in the people who live there, ultimately are always gonna be volatile places until we really commit to trying to, to get people uh, onto a path of more opportunity. Tomorrow night, part three of our series, Reforming the Force. As dozens of APD officers leave in the past year, the department is also looking to the future and what it means for the next generation of policing in Austin. For the KVU Defenders, Tony Polhetsky, KVU News. Tony, thank you for that. You can watch part three again, Reforming the Force. That's at 6 o'clock and 10 o'clock tomorrow night right here on KVU. And on October 4th, Fourth, we're hosting a town hall with local public safety leaders about Austin's approach to policing. Ahead of that forum, we would like for you to send us your questions by texting them to the KV Defenders at 512-459-9442.